who have seen that I got stranded on the Isle of Mole for 36 hours. Not a bad thing to happen, especially as I had my camera with me. Day one was mainly about photographing white-tailed eagles from a boat. This was the kind of setup photographic opportunity that are great, but quite unusual for me. Normally I like to find my own wildlife. So, for day two, I decided to go and have a look around the Isle of Mull and see what I could actually find for myself. So why don't you join me, and also, why don't you like and subscribe? I noticed quite a few people have recently subscribed, so thank you all very much. So let's have a look and see what my last day on Mull would bring. Oh, I think this cow is coming straight for me. He's taking no prisoners. Hello. First good bird of the day is a ring-tailed hen harrier. And he's flying on the other side. Oh no god, there's two. Right, there's a convenient place for me to stop as well. Right, um, <laughs> Okay. So I'm at this open area and I've just been watching and filming a hen harrier. And he's gone down at the moment, but... Oh, there it is. Oh, you beauty. Absolute beauty. It is a bit windy, so I'll speak as loud as I can. There's apparently about 46 breeding pairs of hen harrier here on on Mull, and um, I've seen four this morning so far. I managed to get some film. This one's gone down again. I managed to get some film but I haven't managed to get any photos yet but I think I'll stake this out for a bit because it's a, a very hen harriery place but I'm tempted to try there's a, a track that goes through this damp area I might try there and so I've come off the main road I'm on a little, a little track, and there's at least three hen harriers around. Um, I always mess up hen harriers, whether it's the male or the female. There's one light, smart-looking one, which I always think is the male, and there's two darker ones with a ring tail, which I always think is the female. But I think I might be absolutely wrong. So I'm just going to wait around here for a bit and see if I can get some more photos. I want some film of them. In the distance, the two darker ones sort of playing and messing about in the wind, just in front of a house. But hopefully, if I stake this out for a while, I may get some... I may just get lucky. Where I live, hen harriers are a really rare sight. I maybe get one or two sightings a year. So to be seeing the numbers of hen harriers I saw on the Isle of Mull was quite extraordinary. And yes, this is either a juvenile or a female. The males are the ones with the, the sort of smart grey uniform and the ring tails are, as I say, either females or juveniles. What a beautiful, beautiful bird to see. Right, so I've camoed up. To be honest with you, I don't think it'll make any difference because the birds saw me arrive. You know, unless I could get somebody to drop me off here. However, it's a bit cold, so I thought I would uh, put it on anyway. Now, while I'm here waiting, I thought I'd tell you about a special piece of equipment that I've got. And you can buy them from me. They're only £2 each. And it's particularly designed for the Monfrotto tripods to take the, the tripod uh, plate off the lens. It's a special tool. It's got, what, seven sides? 
fits perfectly, I've tried various options, a smaller one with more sides, fits perfectly and it's even got a picture of the Queen on one side and Britannia on the other. So yours for only £2. Or you could just get it in change. Yeah, 50p's work brilliantly for doing the screw heads. Much better than any multi-tool or anything like this just to sort of get it nice and tight. So always carry 50p in your pocket. Very useful. Well that was good photographing the hen harriers. Well actually no video in them. I never managed to photograph them. It's one of the problems with doing these sort of short trips is I've now worked out exactly where I should be. Um, but I won't be able to do it in this trip. So I will be, in the words of Arnie, I'll be back. <laughs> Which is quite appropriate as at the moment I'm going back. Right, I've just pulled over. I've just seen something really strange. What the heck is that? Right, where are you? Uh, uh, that's a seal, that's a seal. This is... no. So the seals are watching. What a... what the hell is it? Seals are there. Seals are there. Ah! Oh! Okay. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. Cue the footage. What is it? Seals are there. Seals are there. Ah! Oh! Okay. <laughs> Not what I was expecting. Yeah, so I've just spotted another disturbance in the water. And I don't think that snorkel is this time. Oh wow. That is not snorkelers. A large pod of dolphins again, like yesterday. Wow. Common dolphins, some very small ones, doing some really good tricks, lots of leaping, magical. Far too far for photography but with a crop sensor, with a crop mode.
So it seems to be going backwards and forwards in the area over there. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't think you'd get common dolphins this far into the bay, into this sea lock. Bird watching on the Isle of Mull can create quite a dilemma. Now if you're similar to me, you probably used to watch Father Ted, a great comedy which included one of the great sketches of all time as Father Ted tried to explain to Dougal the difference between a small plastic toy cow that was close by and a large real cow that was in the distance. This cow is small, that cow is far away. Well this is the dilemma you get on the Isle of Mull, where quite often you see a large raptor in the distance and can't decide whether it's a, actually a medium sized raptor fairly close or a very large raptor in the distance. This bird, however, was quite easy. This was a huge raptor in the distance. I'd gone to a, a site which I'll keep a bit quiet because I think it's somewhere I'll go back to hoping to try and photograph golden eagles, which is a bird I would love to get photographs of in the wild. However, the only eagle that turned up was this one, a white-tailed. And after the day before, you know, it was not quite what I was hoping for, not the right eagle, but what a magnificent bird. Just watching it hanging in the thermals, it was a fantastic sight to see. And yeah, great thing to, to just watch. I do like the sort of setups like the day before where you were sort of guaranteed wildlife, but there's nothing like the thrill of finding your own to actually go out and discover something for yourself and get some some limited footage, but I say, what a bird. What a beautiful, beautiful, immature white-tailed eagle. So I've got a couple of otters, quite distant. I always love watching otters, they're so active and fun. Although I do know one beaver watcher who calls them whippity tailed river neds, although these are obviously sea neds. They are hyperactive creatures and really good to see. Although, to be fair, I won't beat the images I took on Shetland a few years ago today. So it's some positioned ahead of where they're coming. I don't know whether they've stopped further along the coast from where I am. Well, I need to just be patient. I actually jumped too far ahead of the otters and I think I know where they've gone. In fact, I think I might have been able to hear them. Still nice to see and if I'd have got some good images of otters that would have just been greedy because this trip has been amazing. However, my 36 hours is now at huh, 34, actually no, yeah 35 and 34 and three quarters hours left. 30, <laughs> say that in English. Oh, after otters and lack of sleep and sea eagles, I'm struggling to think. But anyway, I better get towards this ferry. And I'm going to go down the coast a little bit just in case they have got ahead of me. So that's been quite an adventure. So. Would I recommend 36 hours on Mull? I mean, to be honest, I'd recommend 36 years on Mull. It was fantastic. 
I wish I had more time, but apparently I've got some good images, I think. We'll see. It, um, yeah, it's a great place. That boat trip yesterday was absolutely amazing. I got a bit of a surprise image, which is a shot of a bird that kind of drives me nuts. Buzzards. They're so annoying. They pose at the side of the road, and as soon as you get anywhere near them, they're gone. You know, there's no chance. And one today didn't go. I managed to get a photo, and I wish I'd had a bit more time, because I decided to review the pictures, and at that point it flew off, and I just managed to grab a few shots, but not as many as I'd like. So yeah, so I'd love to go back. Um, I'm sure I will do. I now know where to go for Harriers. I know where to go for Otters. In fact, I think I know exactly where to go for Otters, but didn't quite get the shots I was hoping for, I don't think. And also, I think I've got a place to scout out for Golden Eagle, which would be an amazing bird to get good images of. But yeah, I'm on the ferry. It'll be setting off very soon. <sighs> Hungry. <laughs> Should have bought more food yesterday when I was in Tobermory. Yeah. And I've been told to go to us. And so I left the wonderful Isle of Mull, heading across on the Calback Ferry back over to Oban. I always loved the peace and tranquility of ferries, watching the waves, hoping for something like a dolphin or a porpoise to come along. They are magical moments to savour at the end of the day. Peace. Quiet, oh, and the typical sound of Kalmak. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like and subscribe. There'll be more videos out soon. Thank you so much for watching.